after, so I think it's about time to start. What do y'all think? Uh, I'm looking forward to speaking with you today. Uh, welcome to uh, the second joint webinar that Solus is conducting in our webinar series this year. Uh, this in webinar is going to be focused on the new Solus 125 1500K inverters and the monitoring solutions that also energy can provide that leads to, in tandem when working with these two companies together, better return on investment for your two to 40 megawatt PV systems. Uh, I'm lucky to be joined today by my own colleague, uh, Austin Tabor, running our service group. Say hi, Austin. Hey, everyone. And by Jacob Nardi from Also Energy. Uh, how, about, uh, how about a hello, Jacob? Hey, Terrence. Thanks for the introduction. Good to be with both of you, and I'm looking forward to this lecture. Uh, today, we are going to be covering a couple of topics, but first, uh, I want to introduce Jin Long and uh, uh, the hardware and the services that we can provide, and then uh, I'll get into kind of a deep dive on that new 125 utility scale inverter for those 1500 volt systems you're designing. And then we'll get into the also energy products and the services that they provide. And after we discuss that, I wanna get into some of the pre-install and post-install service uh, synergies, I call them, between the two companies that help you get an optimum design pre-install and really keep those uh, that the OPEX low and uh, system operation high after installation. And then we'll go through a couple of examples of the Solus and also Energy products put together. And finally, we'll finish with a Q&A where you can ask any questions that might come up during the webinar. Uh, so first off, thanks for attending again. I appreciate the time uh, you're putting into this today. I know Solar's a busy, industry these days, and it's hard to carve out some time like this, but uh, thanks for attending that. Now, Jinlong Solus is a now a publicly traded company. Yeah, we were recently listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, and uh, that can provide, I think, a little confidence to folks who are investing in our company and who we are. You can see our manufacturing facility there, solar all over the roof. I love that. And uh, we've had that facility now for uh, over 14 years, and uh, have a supply history since 2005 and it's interesting to note that we were the first Chinese PV string inverter company to achieve that UL certification all the way back in 2009. Uh, so we've been in the country doing our due diligence here and getting systems uh, installed and I guess our brand name is being recognized a little bit more. We have been white labeled under Sunrun and Canadian Solar for quite a while of our history here in North America but now we're bringing out the Solar's brand name you can see that we're a global company certified around the world. And, uh, and well, we're, for example, we have more than 20% market share in UK, and you can see the uh, we won that top inverter brand there four years in a row. Uh, but in addition to the North American products that we offer, we also offer a full service group. And I'd like Austin to jump in here and talk a little bit about that. Hey everyone, my name is Austin Tabor. I'm the service manager here in North America for Jin Long Solus. Um, Terrence, this is kind of off script. Can you go back one slide? I, I do want to point something out to everyone uh, in the group. Sure, um, sure. That's a that's a basketball court um, in the far right side of that gray area. So not only are we uh, you know fully vertically integrated, but we also like to have a lot of fun. So, anyways, that's all I want to mention. <laughs> true, Keep going. True. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyways, guys, my name is Austin Tabor. I'm the service manager here in North America, um, and I helped assemble our service platform um, for Jin Long Solus. And I want to give you guys a brief overview because I don't really think there's anything else um, really like that, like this um, in the industry currently. I've worked a couple different inverted manufacturers, and I can tell you they don't have this. Um, so first off, this is a global service platform. Anything that happens within it is for directly to our HQ. And like I mentioned, we're vertically integrated. And what that means is uh, if you saw that picture before, our R&D department is right next door to our production line. So any information we get from our ticketing system, um, we can basically take that information and go right down to the, to the manufacturing line and make engineering changes. So this is, this is a really powerful solution um, that pairs uh, very well with what we do. So first off, um, part of this ticketing system, um, we, get, we get tickets obviously coming in. 
these can come from multitude, multitude of different channels. They can come from, uh, from a phone line, from an email, from a chat message, or forwarded from um, someone else on our team. And the great thing about this is nothing gets dropped through the cracks, right? Nothing falls into the cracks. We're able to take all this data and make judgment calls and decisions based on it. When we follow these solutions, um, you know, from the first time it happens to when it's completed, we document that and make sure that it becomes a solution article. If it's something we haven't seen before, we would build a whole article on how to solve it in the future. Uh, the next part of that is our service line. We have a global contact center that's available 24 hours a day with a multitude of languages in there. Um, but here locally, we have folks based in um, California, Texas, and Florida that answer our service line. And uh, those are technicians that can help you out, resolve your issues. Each one of those phone calls is recorded and transcribed. And all of that stuff is attached directly to the tickets. So that doesn't mean we just have a bunch of recordings sitting out in the cloud. These are actionable recordings that we can look at. And based on what we get from our, um, our phone line and our ticketing system, we can figure out what our customers need, what kind of data is coming in, um, and then we can make solution articles tailored to our customers that can help them uh, resolve issues much more quickly. You don't have a rat race. There isn't you know, some issue that someone else hasn't seen before. If we haven't seen it before, we make an article and we disseminate that among our team members and our customers. So that brings me into the next section here, which is our customer solution portal. Um, this isn't hidden anywhere. If you Google any of our fault codes or any, uh, any of our um, grid standards, any of our, our other versions of uh, products, you can find them on our customer solution portal. We have all kinds of information on there. You can even submit tickets directly from that platform. So this is, this is a really powerful tool for those folks that are out there in the field and maybe it's the weekend and no one's available. They can log in here and they can find the solutions um, to the problems they're experiencing. And some of the stuff might just say, hey, uh, perform general ground fault troubleshooting. Or it might say, hey, this is gonna be an RMA. You know, don't waste your time on troubleshooting this. So you know, use this portal, if you're an installer, feel free to use this portal to help um, make the most of your service visits. And then finally, um, having all of that data, what we do with it uh, is we're able to share that data. And I'm gonna show you that in the next couple of slides, but we're able to take that data and make, um, you know, make some really powerful decisions and demonstrate some really powerful metrics to our customers. And we're gonna do that right here. So this is our RMA, uh, um, RMA rate over the past uh, two years. So you're looking at 2018 is in orange. If you look at the, uh, the shaded area, that's the amount of um, tickets and phone calls that we had coming in. And then if you look at that line down there, what you're looking at is the amount of RMAs that we sent out for that amount of inverters or for that amount of volume that we had coming in. And that was in 2018. There was, um, like everyone else, there was all kinds of arc fault stuff happening in 2018. So you can see our, our, our RMA rate was a little bit higher. And then if you look at 2019, we really used the data that we got in 2018 to make a, a change in the factory, an engineering change. Now if you look at 2019, that RMA rate is staying pretty much in parallel with uh, 2018's numbers. But look at the amount of volume that we had, so the amount of phone calls and troubleshooting stuff that came through over our service line. You're able to see that you know, our product uh, is very stable and consistent. There are no super high peaks or anything like that. And this is all real data. This isn't something that's just been you know, fabricated because someone requested it. This is all coming directly from our phone calls and other interactions with our customers. Go ahead. Excellent. Thank you, buddy. You're so intuitive. Um, all right, so that's, that's great, right, seeing those numbers, but I think the most important thing that you guys need to see is, you know, how long does it take to talk to somebody? So if you look at the top and kind of over to the left, what you're looking at is our written response um, averages. So we have a, a general service level agreement that we like to hold ourselves to, uh, and that's to respond to our customers within an hour. And so we're able to do that 80% of the time over all the tickets that we had in 2019. So 80% of the time we're responding in under an hour. Um, and then 20% above that, we were over an hour here and there. Um, but if you look in the far left, most of our phone calls and most of our interaction, not phone calls, most of our tickets were handled. Most of the responses were handled in 15 minutes. And then the rest were, you know, that uh, everything 45 minute window after that. Um, next, if you take a look at the phone call statistics. So we had about 3,800 phone calls and this is all this is all in our ticketing system. This, is, this takes 15 minutes for me to export this data. This, this is all available super easily to our customers. Um, so total calls, 3,800. The average wait time 
I know a lot of people post on LinkedIn showing like 40 minute wait times with, uh, with uh, you know, helplines. We're looking at one minute wait times here. The average duration of phone calls, whether it was troubleshooting, um, RMAs or whatever else it was, we were able to solve those issues or at least you know, get someone on their way back to a productive day in under six minutes. So this, this is just demonstrating that you know, the platform that we've put together, the, the processes and procedures that we've built into this platform, um, they're incredibly powerful, incredibly um, valuable to our customers because we're, we're essentially, at the end of the day, we're respecting your time. Uh, it, I used to be a field installer. I know, I know what it's like to be out there waiting on hold. And when we were building this platform, my number one thing was making sure that our customers get the help they need when they're in the field and when they're struggling. All right, Terrence, all you. Thanks, Austin. Uh, indeed, Solus is proud of their service platform and the fact that we can get warm bodies and uh, uh, technical voices on those lines to help you out quickly. Uh, and you may have some questions about some of our commercial products and especially our new 125 that you can see there. Uh, this is our full line of three phase inverters. I'm showing you here our, well, we could call CNI or 1000 volt rooftop type inverters, uh, 25 to 40K and then 50 to 66K. Uh, these are two frame sizes. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the four MPPTs are distinguishing factor. The, the fact that you can get a fan uh, on these, with, they can be supplied with or without, and uh, uh, lay down flat on a rooftop, for example, you, a fan may aid in uh, cooling that inverter. Now, on the 125, these inverters are typically installed on behind the fence, of course, at 1500 volts, and uh, they have just a, a wide variety of new features that I'm kind of excited to talk to you about. Uh, now, the 1500 volt 125, we call it extra high voltage. Uh, the 5G stands for the fifth generation of this uh, product, and indeed, it is a superior inverter design. We've uh, this is a single stage inverter. 99.1% max efficiency. We were able to do that by essentially eliminating that boost stage. And well, it's a, a, a single MPPT and there are 20 inputs on this and you can monitor all 20 of those inputs. String monitoring is a distinguishing feature of this product. Of course, you have uh, IV scan function. This is another one that's just another high tech feature. I'll get a little bit further into this, uh, but generally optimizing your PV strings, and then uh, leakage current repression and uh, the anti-PID is also a really cool new function that this inverter includes. Reactive power, uh, rule 21, of course, and, uh, and surge protection are all included. You can see in this diagram that it is a single stage design. We were able to achieve about as high efficiency as you could possibly get, right? There's not much further we can go. And, uh, but this design is most importantly can avoid those kind of electromagnetic incompatibilities that you might see in other inverters. And, and because we have a NEMA 4X enclosure, Solus is very uh, diligent when designing our inverters with heat in mind, making sure that our temperature regulation within our inverters is optimal and that we are getting the best uh, kind of passive solar, I'm sorry, passive uh, cooling that we can get on these products. This is something that was just kind of blew me away. When I started in solar, once the inverter was under 50% loaded, it kind of dropped off in efficiency. And so to see how almost peak efficiency when the inverter is loaded even to 20%, and this is something that you can count on even early in the morning with Solus because of our wide operating ranges on our MPPTs. And you combine that with the efficiency of the inverter when it's loaded so low like this, you can really squeeze out those last kilowatt hours uh, in the evening and it's gonna get up early in the morning and get to work. Uh, so loading up the inverters, you get a lot of freedom here because you don't necessarily need to load it up all the way to the max voltage on every MPPT. You may want to do that uh, you know, on one particular inverter, but on the next inverter, you may load that down with a, uh, a lower voltage and still get peak efficiency out of both units. This particular inverter 
uh, 1.5 to 1 uh, DC to DC ratio is just not an issue. It really allows you to design your systems to really up that power density, you know, to uh, get better cash flow on some of those sites where you're not so much worried about uh, clipping, but more worried about uh, maximizing your return on uh, cash flow. So typically we see these systems and so, you know, mainly around 1.3 where your clipping is relegated to less than 2% or so, but uh, if you want to up that IRR, you might raise the DCAC ratio and this inverter is not going to have an issue with that. Another feature we like to talk about here is this volt watt mode. Essentially, it's, it's a, well, it's sort of an advanced uh, ride through uh, function, but you can see how really you can up your production at the end of the day because essentially you can see in that second diagram there how it's dropped out for five minutes here in the United States uh, uh, in each one of those instances, whereas on the curve on the left, you can see you've got a lot more fat under the curve, a lot more. Uh, energy production at the end of the day. Uh, well, uh, it's just uh, uh, part of physics that as we up the voltage in these PV systems, the PV modules can get more susceptible to this induced degradation. And Solus has been working on this for a while and now has this anti-pit mitigation as an option. And essentially it's reversing uh, the pit effect at night. And you can really maintain that performance of all your PV modules within the array. Again, this is that IV curve scanning that I was talking about that can really optimize what those strings that may have a damaged cell in one of the modules or, or possibly there's some shadowing a part of it or a little mismatch within the string itself. And what this curve scanning does is just squeezes out a lot of those issues and optimizes the IV curve for you. And again, I think one of the strongest pieces of, uh, that actually also energy can take advantage of as well, because you can get all this string monitoring information through the also energy platform. And we're going to be talking about that in more detail. And this is again, that, that, that assurance that you're going to be able to keep the OPEX low because of the amount of information that you're getting from the site. Now, you saw that that inverter was kind of a unique shape and we built it that way so that you could prefab, let's say some power modules, some 50K or 500K, or even as you see there, a, uh, a one meg setup where you're using two AC combiner boxes. And you could, for example, mount that on a pad uh, near a centrally located transformer. Uh, don't get me wrong, of course, you can always mount these inverters at the end of the row, uh, spread out amongst the array, or uh, centralize them in some designs that may, let's say, a, uh, a relatively flat site, uh, you may find that that's the most ideal way to go. But on a rolling site, you may find that uh, spreading the inverters out amongst the array field is the most efficient way to go. And of course, if you do this, you retain all of your PV string monitoring so you can really kind of speed up install and still ensure that you're getting the maximum of information. And with that, I'd like to segue over to our guest, Jacob Nardi, who's going to talk about the also energy uh, hardware and software and services that they can provide. Jacob? Hey, thanks, Terrence. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, all. So my name is Jacob Nardi. I'm a technical engineer here at Also Energy. Um, the next few slides that we're going to go through, you're going to see this key that's being used to just kind of indicate what kind of information is being presented. Um, there's some company information. We're going to talk about our software control systems and the monitoring system. Uh, next slide for me, Terrence. So also Energy is the world leader in monitoring control and management for distributed energy assets. There's 30 gigawatts of uh, sites powered worldwide. That's more than 200 sites in 40 plus countries. Um, we acquired Locus Energy and Skytron Energy over the last two years and have been integrating them into the also energy ecosystem um, to bring the best in breed offering for each of those previous plants. Next. So also energy in that uh, acquisition of those companies, we've really um, bolstered our end-to-end -end turnkey solutions for PV data collection and controls all the way from residential up through the utility scale space. 
Um, we have the PowerTrack platform that now uh, enables asset PV asset owners and operators to have a single source for all of their data uh, analytics for all of their sites. We have a, a robust hardware designs that will go out and actually collect all that data locally there on site. And then we have our, our engineering team that will provide professional services to make our solutions work and to integrate with other data solutions provided by your other vendors, uh, inverters, trackers, et cetera. Uh, the PowerTrack platform, thank you, Terrence, good anticipation. The PowerTrack platform really runs the gambit of all of the uh, solutions that we offer across that ecosystem, from residential up through the utility space. We allow our customers to aggregate data in a single place, route out to their CMS uh, systems, um, use their asset management tools to keep track of uh, project deliverables uh, priorities, and then do portfolio aggregation and create reports for um, all of your sites, whether again, residential, commercial, or utility scale. That being said, we can also bring in data from third-party hardware and software platforms. Inevitably, as a portfolio, a PV asset portfolio grows, you're gonna end up with a kind of various sorted vendors across that platform. Um, we specialize in bringing all of those vendors, all the data from across different platforms and different hardware providers into the single platform of PowerTrack, giving you a single pane of glass to see all of your assets under. Next slide, Terrence. So this is a high level view of the Also Energy software and all the um, kind of features that we provide. Um, there's a lot of functionality there and it really depends on what your goals are on how to best leverage it for your purposes. It depends on whether you're an asset manager, a developer, or maybe an operator. But there's something for everyone and all of these tools are very powerful. Next slide, Terrence. So the software allows you to manage by exception to quickly identify actionable insights. Um, you can diagnose issues, get the plant back to optimal performance as quickly as you possibly can. You can also bring all the data from uh, a wide fleet into a single platform to kind of uh, standardize your office processes on that platform. And then it, it, it empowers operators to do a lot of troubleshooting prior to rolling the truck, right? Uh, data is king. It lets you um, make decisions, uh, you know, educated decisions without having to get out there and lay hands on uh, a device out in the field. Um, it also, the PowerTrack platform also enables you to automate, uh, automate and streamline repetitive tasks like reporting, um, uh, uh, analytics that you want to do, et cetera. And then also allows you to coordinate between the different branches of your team with a single version of truth, right? Hey, again, everybody's looking through a single pane of glass and looking uh, at the same place at the same information it gives a lot more, uh, builds a lot of efficiency there across the team. Um, in terms of export controls, you know, we have solutions for plant control. Um, we, for both, for all of our uh, options, but, you know, namely that CNI and utility scale application, we're going to see more of those control requirements, whether those are maximum export controls, zero net export, or adhering to local utility and ISO telemetry requirements. Um, we'll also involve our engineering team to provide a detailed technical drawing and consult your team to make sure you're asking all the right questions of your other vendors. And then in real time uh, on the platform, we can set up site-specific KPIs. That way, whatever the site's objectives are, uh, the platform has been specialized or uh, tailored to uh, keep track on those priorities for your organization. Talked a little bit about plant control, and as you get into the larger scale applications, it becomes all the more uh, important. Um, on larger utility scale applications, you'll see a lot of um, requirements for regulating reactive power, voltage control. Um, you might have the utility requesting the ability to send a curtailment command. Um, you know, our experience worldwide really allows us to streamline that interconnection with proven technology, right? We use devices and hardware that uh, utilities and um, our owners are comfortable with. Uh, we've met challenging interconnection requirements worldwide, all across the United States, all across Europe and Asia, and through Central and South America as well. So we're uniquely positioned uh, to understand your utility interconnection requirements and to meet those, um, have, having a, a band of experience to draw from. Um, similarly, you're gonna have those utility ISO telemetry requirements 
and we can again specialize or um, customize those KPIs per your plant um, and based on your operational needs. The larger scale utility application uh, plant controller has the ability to be a standalone solution separate from our power track platform. So monitoring is a, the key objective for a lot of folks when they're talking about a skater or DAS system and why they ever engage also energy to begin with. And ultimately, we provide a very effective solution for um, those monitoring solutions. Um, we can meet your California Rule 21 requirements. We can aggregate portfolio assets onto a single platform, PowerTrack. And then we can lose, use all those tools of PowerTrack um, to, again, make site-specific KPIs, create reports that are uh, generated over and over and over again, et cetera. So, you know, again, pretty cost-effective a way to meet all of your monitoring solutions and to meet all of your data validation needs. This is a broad view of our hardware offering uh, on a basic CNI or a small DG application. Uh, on the far left, you'll see the monitoring only tier. Typically, this is going to be us providing uh, the hardware necessary to collect all the data, so our data logger, and then any requisite network infrastructure to route uh, that network connectivity from all the subordinate devices on site. Um, in the center there, you see a control less than 20 megawatts. Many times, these larger DG applications do have some control requirements, some utility uh, regulations that um, set a hard real power limit um, or something else, some other requirement, voltage control, um, zero net export, et cetera. In these type of applications, we'll leverage our power manager as a plant controller, still exporting all the data to our power track um, cloud as uh, necessary. And then as the control requirement gets more advanced, we may opt to use the SEL RTAC as our platform or as our platform for plant control. On larger scale applications above 20 megawatts, we'll typically opt to use a Power Server 3000, which allows for an on-site historian, uh, and then we'll use that SEL RTAC for power plant control. Um, on these large scale applications, we'll actually build a historian and real-time HMI on-site. Um, we'll build it into those power servers. We'll build that HMI on the ignition platform, and we'll execute our plant control via the SEL RTAC. Um, this will make the plant uh, completely portable. All the solution there will be uh, enclosed and portable with the site. Um, all the data and functionality included within that SCADA system um, will transfer hands with that asset as the asset does. Um, understanding that these assets do change hands a number of times over the course of their lifetime, um, especially in that larger scale, it's nice to not be linked to PowerTrack um, necessarily, but it's also a great feature if you have a fleet already on that power track application. Next slide, Terrence. So again, we'll start to dig in now to the also energy services. We talked about our hardware. We talked about the software platform power track where we aggregate data. And then all of our hardware solutions, both to aggregate data up to that platform and execute control as necessary. Next slide. So on larger scale applications, also energy is going to provide uh, complete services over the project lifecycle, especially on that utility scale application. Uh, somebody like myself will involve will be involved in the proposal process, the technical sales engineer. I'll work with the design team uh, and the engineering team to actually put together uh, the technical drawings and the proposal. Um, once we have a PO, we'll assign a project manager who will be assigned to that project throughout the project lifecycle. Um, that project manager will work directly with an, a dedicated project engineer who helped produce the technical drawings, who helped put the system design together to make sure that everything goes in the way that we planned it during that technical sales consulting process. Um, as we get to the back end of the project, we'll actually do some performance modeling, uh, software training, and then we will support the project after it's already turned on to respond as issues come up. Next slide. So we're offering these cost-effective monitoring solutions. We allow you to configure these system baseline settings. You can put those across all of the plants on your fleet. 
um, we can put in your customer supplied performance estimates um, so that um, if, if there's some kind of performance uh, indicator that you guys internally at your company are using that you need to keep track of, hey, we can build that into the PowerTrack platform. Um, we keep performance modeling benchmarks for the system. Uh, if there's a source for a radiance data on site and if there's a model to compare it to, and then we can run a system capacity test. We can help uh, collect the data uh, during that capacity test and then help the owner uh, operator ultimately get through and collect that data for the testing purposes. And then we'll configure advanced performance alerts and then validate the site based on the data analysis that we've done. The pre-install we talked about a little bit. We're going to do an engineering review. We're going to check for compliance with any local applicable codes, uh, any certification requirements or telemetry requirements there locally. Um, we'll also establish a statement of work that's for us internally and also for the customer to clearly outline what the scope is that we're providing and uh, where that ends. We'll provide the system design, project management, and then a uh, full CAD package um, to support uh, the design that we've created. And then also as the project comes to completion or as we execute the controls, uh, we'll produce a control narrative as well. And, and hey, Jacob, I don't know if I can pop in here real quick. I just wanna bring this up to, for everyone. Sure. Um, you know, the sooner you engage us, uh, either either Jin Long or also Energy, it's, it's really important to to keep us uh, abreast of what's going on because we could potentially uh, solve problems um, in your system design or, or in your setup prior to them, those problems actually occurring. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Austin. You know, um, I, 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 I've said many times, you know, I can only fix one problem at a time. I can avoid a hundred problems at a time out front, right? So that's kind of, you know, if you let also energy or the solace team get engaged in your design process early on, we can take considerations for our technical uh, piece of the puzzle um, and bring them to the forefront on your behalf. So absolutely, great point, Austin. You know, the sooner you engage us, the more we can help. Uh, next page, Terrence. So this is an example of our CAD package, right? We're going to build a CAD package that is complementary to your already existing electrical set. We're going to outline um, explicitly all the different wiring connections between devices, um, where devices get powered, and then provide that uh, block diagram and that layout for conceptual reasons for the site installers. Uh, you know, this, this really helps the installation team. It helps the site get constructed the way that we intended it to. Um, it helps make our equipment look good and it helps your project uh, be successful, right? So we'll, we'll turn those into your team and look for your feedback um, to verify against your design. Once that design is complete, once we're there on site, once all of our equipment has been populated uh, in its location, um, we will typically plan an on-site commissioning trip um, for a large enough application. Otherwise, if it's not necessary, we can do most of our work remotely. Um, that'll include point-to-point -point testing with the utility as necessary for telemetry purposes. Um, we'll specify network communications necessary to meet our control requirements at the point of interconnect. We'll create custom dashboards. As we mentioned, those uh, KPIs specific to your organization may require some dashboards specific uh, to reflect that function. Um, and then we'll go through and confirm device communication verify the document and sensor placement, and then do full testing and validation of whatever the scope that we're responsible for delivering, whether that's just data collection, uh, full control, or a full HMI uh, on-site historian as well. So whatever that scope is, we'll provide a full closeout package that documents all of our deliverables and then deliver that to you guys as something to put into your uh, uh, repository there as, as site documentation. Next slide, Terrence. And then the also energy support, right? Our support line is available seven days a week. We have call centers all across the US. Um, we have prioritized access for technicians working on site. You guys can, uh, if a technician's going out to the site, you can actually schedule that visit ahead of time. Or alternatively, if you're already there on site and let the support team know, they'll prioritize your call. Um, I mentioned you could schedule a visit from our field technicians. You can actually have an also presented. It takes about two weeks ahead of time to get those there. 
uh, and then we can also verify your data and make corrections based on uh, anomalies that are discovered there. Next slide, Terrence, that was fun. And then we have a lot of resources to provide training and onboarding. Um, essentially, our tool, our platform is only as powerful as our user knows how to make it. So um, we'll provide on-site one-on-one training. Um, you can actually schedule training remotely at any time, and those are free. Those training sessions are free from us. Um, it's within our interest to make sure that you guys are um, power users on the PowerTrack platform. Um, so we can schedule that one-on-one -on -one training. We can, we actually make uh, videos and resources, and we're always uploading those into our knowledge base that you guys can access at any time through the PowerTrack platform. Um, we have a structured onboarding training program that makes sure that the time we hand off the software, the keys to the car, essentially, that you guys are ready to drive, that you guys are really uh, able to use that PowerTrack platform to accomplish your goals. And then again, remote training is always free, and you can schedule the training local to your offices with enough time out front. That's such a strong and versatile set of hardware that we that also energy can bring to your projects. And part of what I wanted to get a new project reinstall and hardware to and take advantage of to help them optimize the design and then optimize performance of the system and do the, and the like true from both customers it's you know if you have a challenging interconnection really thing here and make sure that you're getting the best data you can and that your data system is giving you useful uh, information because, you know, there's going to be issues out in the field and you want to make sure that you uh, can, going before you even get out there, you can optimize your truck roll costs and that's hard to do now. Uh, Jacob and Austin can talk a little bit about this site and some of the benefits that you can advantage of these two companies be pre-installed. Hey. Austin? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I think I jumped the shark earlier and came on too soon with this, but... <laughs> no, um, no, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing here today. <laughs> Um, so one of the things here that I that I really want to stress on everyone, and, and this has happened to me multiple times, and, and Jacob, I think you and I have experienced this in the past. Uh, we've come, we've we've gotten to a site or something for commissioning, and you get there, and it's like, um, you know, it wasn't the people who are actually there installing it, you know, weren't the people who went through the training, you know, and, and most of the times this training is, uh, like Jacob mentioned, it's no cost. It's just a matter of getting the right people involved and making sure they know how all of this goes together to prevent those problems. Um, later on. Sorry, Jacob, do you want to comment yeah. on that too? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, pretty common, right? As you say, um, you know, lots of times the people who are placing the order and the people who actually have to operate the device are uh, far removed from each other. So, I, you know, I think that's part of what we'll work out and wanna, we want to be involved in the process and the implementation throughout so we can identify that right who's who's actually the party that needs to be um, taught the platform and needs to be empowered with this information so yeah i, I think that's something to be um you know to take note of absolutely yes it, sorry terrence go ahead well no it's 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 easy free services that these companies offer that the installers especially on these big projects there's a lot of money involved you can take advantage of we can help you with specifying your transformer and PV string sizing on our inverters and uh, provide, the, just like Also Energy can, commissioning services. So both the Solus team uh, and the Also Energy team can meet you on site pre-commissioning uh, and make sure that everything's set up properly, optimal, uh, everything, uh, the equipment is being commissioned properly and that you're getting that first set of data pro the way that you expect. And I, I think we have time for this. Um, the the really cool part about the Solus inverters um, is this is all DC powered. So you can very easily, you know, get the site basically, um, essentially comms ready. And, you know, before you have that AC power, before you have that great interconnect, 
that way you can kind of get the system going and help find those problems before you get to that, that witness testing stage. You can have everything basically ready to go. Sorry, continue. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. Um, you know, there, you see a bullet point there that says small details can be addressed before the install. You know, something that Austin and I, you know, were talking about earlier today. Um, you know, it's never the big problems that uh, tie up sites or, you know, cause major delays. It's always the small details. It's always the minutia that got swept under the rug that ends up causing multiple week delays on site, et cetera. So, you know, also energy and the Solus product end up intertwined on these projects that we both get um, incorporated into, you know, via the network, via the controls, apparatus, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, engaging us early and allowing us to work together allows us to iron out a lot of those potential wrinkles early, it allows us to do some of that network architecture um, dialogue, some of that Modbus mapping and tag interface question stuff that comes up inevitably at the end of a project early on way out from under the gun, way out from the, uh, you know, the COD date and the uh, substantial completion deadline. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it doesn't just uh, end with uh, the delivery of the equipment. Both companies can also provide post-install troubleshooting, uh, as, as Austin mentioned earlier, RMI on, RMA uh, online ticket submission and, and tracking of those tickets. And should there be any alarms or anything, we can provide online or in-person uh, solutions. And um, this, is, this is my favorite part right here, because the great thing about Also Energy is that, you know, you have robust uh, amounts of information that you can, you know, sink your teeth into. So if you're not able to troubleshoot something, and even before you go to the site, you know, don't roll that truck right away. Um, come interact, interface with us. And if you have um, a monitoring platform like Also Energy, you can bring, you know, give us access to that. Let us look at the data or just export the data and let us look at it. We can make, we can make decisions based on that data that you give us. And we can say, oh, cool, you, you need to troubleshoot a ground fault or you need to look here. You don't have inputs on these strings. I mean, it's very easy when we have that data to make these recommendations to your team. Exactly right. Um, well, I hope that the, you attendees have really gotten a, a better well, uh, insight into what may be offered to you for free, po both pre-install and post-install. Please take advantage of those services from these companies. We're going to go through a couple of examples here of the Solus and also Energy architecture on site. Take a sure. So what you're seeing here is a typical CNI or small scale DG application. So this represents an application that is mainly going to be a data aggregator, mainly going to be uh, looking at those monitoring services, but you'll see the power manager 2200 is there on site. So if there was a requirement for some basic control, uh, real power limiting zero net export, that capability is built in as well. Um, you'll see that we provide the network infrastructure down at the bottom in that power block, and we'll actually route uh, all the comms from the Solus 125 into the uh, also Energy provided network there on site. We will provide the Also Energy utility weather station there on site as necessary and aggregate data from that as well as, again, all the subordinate devices there, production meter, tracker controllers. If there's a utility or a third party telemetry connection, we'll manage that through our system as well. And then we export data up to PowerTrack through our managed VPN that's a WAN connection through a Verizon VPN to, for an added layer of security. That means that none of the network traffic from your site actually goes through the internet at large. It's only going through our Also Energy VPN directly to our Also Energy Power Track servers. So added level of security there. Um, and yeah, uh, a robust tool uh, or toolbox to choose from for data collection as well as control requirements as they come up. Security is so important as we go forward. And we, we see, you know, we're, we're exposing these systems a little bit to utility controls and, uh, well, we have to be so diligent about ensuring that our data is good and uh, not corrupted. And to have that extra layer of security is just a great comfort. Uh, in this next slide, we have a second example of a typical utility scale system. 
Great. Thanks, Terrence. Yeah, so you see here um, the architecture of a typical utility scale application. This may be a large scale DG or all the way up through a 100 megawatt AC plant. Um, so you'll see the similar, a lot of the similar parts and pieces, the network infrastructure, the uh, utility grade weather station, um, the interface to the solus inverters, all that architecture is very similar. Um, some of the added features that we have is we have, you know, typically we're dealing with a hard line connection. So we add a firewall for uh, network security there local to the site. And then we add two servers, one for dedicated HMI, leveraging that ignition HMI application to produce the, uh, to provide the power track SCADA server. And then we also use an on-site historian where we build a local uh, SQL historian for all that data to be display displayed within the HMI. Um, we'll also use an also energy power plant controller uh, built on the SEO RTAC uh, frame. And from there, we can execute all kinds of plant control commands, um, voltage regulation, real power limiting, uh, telemetry response from the utility, et cetera. And then you also see we, we will coordinate with the substation and switch gear at the POI as well to allow real time control from the HMI, as well as collecting data uh, for long term analytics or uh, metering purposes there at the POI. Okay, great. Now, you can see that that slide is, uh, is got some small words on it, so don't worry. We'll be, have this available to you so you can take a data, take a, a more detailed look at it later on. Uh, now, we've set up some time here. I've seen a lot of questions coming through, and we'd like to, that's the end of our formal presentation, but now let's get into some of the questions we're getting online uh, about the information that you just saw there. Again, we're we're glad to show you some of the great, we think, uh, advanced details of our new 125, 1500 volt, but really we wanted to get out, out there that it's not just about the hardware, it's about the services that these two companies can provide. And well, I'm really pleased that you stuck by us on this. And, and if you have any questions, let's hear them. Travis, do we got something from online? Yeah, uh, Terrence, we got a question here. Uh, what additional hardware will be required for Rule 21 compliance with uh, also energy and solar inverters? But that's for the California market. Well, the uh, solar inverters of 125 is a Rule 21 compliant inverter, so there is no extra hardware that's going to be required uh, for connection of this particular inverter. Jacob? Yeah, I mean, for also energy, there's going to be several system requirements related to the hardware and services for Rule 21. Um, if you're developing a commercial system that may have a, a previously used simple data logger or smart meter, you may have to upgrade the SCADA device to be capable of issuing the commands to the solar smart inverters. Um, that upgraded device at also energy will be the Power Manager 2200 that we've been talking about. Um, that doesn't apply to systems sold today because we'll actually include that, but for free for devices or for sites that have to be retrofitted um, or that submit their interconnection applications after March 22nd, then for that phase two deadline, then you'll we'll make sure to include those. Um, now you might not actually use the control functionality of the the device, but the until the utility flips the switch on their uh, like dirge management system that they're doing. So. Um, Anyway, there's a lot of ambiguity about when that's going to happen. Uh, long story short, we are set up to be that uh, aggregator. Um, we can relay that command from our power manager 2200 out to those solar inverters as necessary. But there's, again, a lot of ambiguity on the utility side on when they're actually going to start sending those commands out. But we'll be ready on that March 22nd date. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Uh, what do you recommend for systems under 2 megawatts? Well, we believe from Solus that the 125 is almost a perfect inverter for that. It's, uh, you know, it's it's not a, uh, it has some advantages over a central inverter in that same space. In, for example, you've got an MPT at every inverter there. For a two megawatt system, you would have 16 of these 125s. And so essentially you've got 16 MPPTs managing your system rather than a single uh, MPPT on a large two megawatt inverter. And so, as you saw in that system diagram, you'd probably have maybe uh, four AC combiner boxes and 16 inverters uh, connected together and then fed to the transformer, typically. 
Sure. And for the also energy side, it really depends on the project. Um, if there's some export limitation requirements or if you have some grid connection requirements like Hawaii or California, then you will need something like the power manager on there to relay those telemetry commands, execute control out to the site. But by and large, typically it's just a monitoring solution uh, without any control functionality. And that's something we can use our standard solution here at Also Energy on, which is our power logger. It's a standard data logger um, built into a NEMA 4 enclosure. We can turn those around typically in four to six weeks. Excellent. Now there are some questions here about getting help, as you mentioned earlier. How do they get help with system commissioning? Well, I mean, on the also energy side, go oh, go ahead, Terrence, if you want. Well, I was going to say on the also energy side, we're going to engage you from the beginning uh, with our project management team and the execution team, especially for a large scale project. Alternatively, if it's a smaller scale application, um, you'll want to schedule at least two weeks out with our field service engineering team to get an on-site uh, resource. Otherwise, also energy has their support line available seven days a week. Um, so you could call in any time without any prior notice. Um, but it, it's always, it's nice to have that, you know, information in the back pocket when you call. It helps the person on the other end be more prepared for you. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, Solus can also uh, provide commissioning services. Uh, commissioning of the inverters is generally a five minute process. So uh, it's really not too complicated, but you never know. You might see some harmonics or something between inverters and, and solace technicians can come out and help you commission your first system, especially with us. We, we encourage new customers uh, to, to engage with us to ensure that they have a great hardware experience and installation experience with the product. And then if there's any issues at commissioning, any faults or anything, we can help with that right away. So uh, getting a little notice that your project is coming online is always great. Uh, but we're, we try to work as hard as we can with new customers and even existing customers. We, uh, if they're on a new site or, or seeing a new product like our new 125, we're happy to come out and help. Um, okay, um, looks like we have some customers that have old legacy systems and they're wondering how to uh, pull the data into the Also Energy platform. Sure. Um, so we do a lot of work aggregating data from existing client systems into the PowerTrack platform. Um, this actually comes a lot from our corporate acquisitions. We uh, acquired Draker in 2018 and we migrated clients using the Draker software onto the PowerTrack platform over the course of this past year, actually. So we have a big team of well-trained folks who specialize in just these portfolio aggregations. Um, in a lot of cases, we can just pull data from the legacy systems without adding any new hardware on site. So that's an API to a portal somewhere. Um, if that's not possible, then we can also retrofit and put our site, our, our hardware there on site to pull all of your subordinate devices directly and then push that to PowerTrack through our typical means through a 4G cell router, et cetera, uh, through that VPN network that I outlined previously. So, Really old hat for us. Um, it, it's pretty easy as establishing the API to the existing platform or adding new hardware. We can communicate with this new 125 via Ethernet TCP. Can, can also energy work with that? Oh, absolutely. Yep. And, you know, that's typical for us. Is, and what we see for inverter manufacturers is that sudden spec uh, Modbus interface. But we'll support uh, any protocol that can be thrown at us. Um, most uh, devices in the solar space we've already had experience with, but if you come with something new, it'll just take a little bit of time to spin up the development as necessary to build that interface. It's typically pretty low hanging fruit for us. Excellent. Okay, um, and then also um, another question here about integrating with uh, CRM systems and Salesforce. Do, do you guys have that? We do. Um, we can integrate with a wide array of CMMS platforms. We've already integrated previously with Salesforce, Maximo, and Fix. But if you have a CMMS platform that your organization is standardized on, um, PowerTrack has the ability to interface with that platform. So it'll take some time to spin up if we've never done it before, but it's absolutely something we can support, especially Salesforce, Maximo, and Fix. Um, those are 
three that we've already had experience with and so we're pretty comfortable working with. But if you have a CMMS that, again, that your company is standardized on, um, typically it's pretty easy for us to integrate with it. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> does also Energy have a list of supported devices? Yeah, we do have a list of supported devices, and that's something that anybody on the sales team should be able to provide. Um, the reality is, and as I mentioned earlier, we interface with most devices out in the solar space. Um, so it's rare that we come across something that we haven't. But as Terrence mentioned, there's always new products rolling out, always new advancements from different vendors. So as that comes up, um, we inevitably have to build those drivers, and we're happy to do that. So if, if a device comes up that is not currently supported, um, all we really need is that interface information, and it's usually a pretty uh, small fee for us to develop a driver to make the data collection happen. Perfect. Um, that is all the questions I have. Um, we did get another question about the uh, Mexico and Latin American regions. Do we have service and support there? or also energy, and also does Solus sell there? Well, I can respond from Solus side. Uh, indeed, we do have office in Mexico, and we are selling product there today, both commercial and residential. Uh, Sergio, our, our lead over there in Mexico, can assist you in those pre-installation and post-installation services that Solus provides, as well as going through any hardware designs uh, using the Solus 125, 1500 volt, or any of our CNI inverters. Uh, we can service the entire region. And remember, Solus uh, is a global company. We have IEC product available in South America and throughout the Caribbean as well. Jacob. Yeah, and for the also energy side, we have a dedicated account manager in that Latin America region. He's based in Mexico City. We also have software documents translated into the Spanish language and we have Spanish language support available. That is based in the US, but Spanish language support is available out of that Boulder office. Excellent. Uh, that's all the questions we have right now. Go ahead, take it over, Terrence. All right, well, really appreciate you staying with me today. Uh, there's a, the point of this webinar really was to show that Solus Plus also energy together can really add up to a greater than the sum of their parts by really leveraging and taking advantage of the free services and the hardware configuration capabilities of these two companies, both pre-install and post-install, you can really optimize your data collection, your installation plan, and your post-installation operations. It really is a great synergy, a great partnership between the two when you take advantage of the both hardware and and services that these two companies provide. Now, this thanks for attending. We've kind of run out of time for today, but uh, uh, we saw a lot of great activity and, and more uh, uh, comments on the chat line, and we can make this presentation available. Of course, you just earned another uh, one point on your NAB set for attending today, and we appreciate that, everyone. And uh, there you have our contact information. Feel free to contact our teams to find out more about the new Solus 125K and the monitoring and control solutions that Also Energy provides. Thank you again so much for your time and have a great day, everybody.